All right, so this video uh, is going to talk about Milton Friedman. Milton Friedman is our second major theorist when it comes to uh, how do we approach business? How do we define what it means to be a good business person? So in this video, I just kind of want to introduce uh, Friedman. I want to talk about uh, three of his major principles uh, because he's going to make the very surprising claim that businesses shouldn't contribute to the common good or the social uh, well-being, that they shouldn't be socially responsible. He's making, in essence, the very um, counterintuitive claim that businesses should not give to charity, that they shouldn't give back, that they shouldn't be expected to contribute to the well-being of others. And uh, most of us would say, well, that's horrible, that's awful. Businesses uh, should lend a helping hand. Um, otherwise, they're greedy and profit-driven and selfish. But he's arguing uh, that actually, in a moral sense, they should not um, give to charity. And so we'll explore why that's the case. So when we look at Milton Friedman, again, he's going to be the second major theorist that we're going to study. We started off with Machiavelli. And for Machiavelli, his only, the only value... Uh, for Machiavelli is power. Uh, there's no uh, universal rules to be followed. Uh, there's nothing that's always good or right. Uh, just do whatever it takes to gain and maintain power. In business, do whatever it takes to gain and maintain profit. For Friedman, he's actually going to say that there's two restrictions. There's two, um, there's two principles uh, that limit, uh, that ought to limit your ability to pursue profit. He thinks that profit uh, is the primary goal of business. That is what should be pursued. That is what their objective should be. But he also argues that this pursuit should be limited by two things. One is honesty. Businesses should be honest. And we'll get into why that's the case in a little bit. He also argues that businesses should follow the law. So as long as they're doing those two things, then go for it. Uh, make as much money as possible. The third theorist, or the third perspective that we're going to study, and we're not going to study it uh, right now, but it's the next one up, is the Catholic approach to, uh, to business. And then the Catholic approach to business, what the Catholics really want to focus on is that you contribute to the common good and human dignity. So those are going to be the principles that uh, orient the Catholic approach to business. Okay, again, uh, Friedman believes, and it is a kind of... Um, provocative, uh, unusual, um, seemingly wrong or immoral position at first glance, that businesses should focus on making profit rather than contributing to some social good or giving to some social cause or giving to charity. So the question is, well, why does he believe this? And there's really three principal reasons. First point, he thinks that attacking profit means you give up the free distribution of resources. And I'm going to go into detail on each of these points in just a second, but I'll get them out there. So again, the first point is that he thinks that when you attack profit making, when you say that's not the goal, essentially what you're going to do is that you give up the free distribution of resources. You give that control of resources to something other than the freedom of consumers and producers. Second point, he's going to argue that businesses don't have responsibility, but individuals do. So it is not a business's responsibility to give. Uh, it is an individual's responsibility. And then finally, he says, when you force or when you expect or when there's so much pressure uh, for businesses to be socially responsible, essentially what these businesses are doing is using people's other people's money for a cause they may not support. These other people could include the employees, could include the consumers, and could include the shareholders. So those are the three reasons that he's going to say businesses should not be expected to give to a social good or charity. You give up the free distribution of resources, you shift responsibility from the individual to the business, and then finally, uh, you're taking money from others to give to a cause that they may not support. Okay, so the first point um, with regard to giving up the free distribution of resources Friedman and other free market capitalists will say the free market capitalistic system is ideal because it allows for maximum freedom. It allows for you <coughs> to go and buy what you want, to live the life that you want. It allows you to be employed uh, and to go seek employment uh, in the field that you are most passionate about, most interested in. You're not forced to do something. 
um, you go and you do what you love, what you think is interesting. Um, but when you give up the free distribution of resources, when you say you know, it shouldn't be uh, producers and employers and employees and consumers determining uh, what is bought and what is sold and what is on the market, then essentially you give that control to something else. And what you ultimately give that control to is government. And he's going to say, look, the more control government gets, the more restricted your life is going to be the more you're going to live under a kind of authoritarian regime where you're told what you can buy, what you can do, where you can be employed, so on and so forth. And it's also less efficient because instead of the free market working, producers and consumers giving, meeting each other where they, um, that satisfies them both, essentially the government's going to take something from the producer and the consumer. The government's going to charge a fee for its organization uh, of the economy. And that means that there's less money um, flowing and there's less money being generated and that the society uh, will be poor. So on page uh, five, the fifth page of the, the Friedman essay, uh, you'll find his discussion of this. He does want to make one caveat. He says, look, if you are a not-for-profit business, then just make that clear. Make it clear, like the Boy Scouts of America that I used to work in. Make it clear that your objective is not profit. But don't pretend like you're a for profit you're a for profit business and you're really just trying to give to the social good or you're really just trying to make the world better. You know, think of something like Tom's shoes. Alright. Um, when it comes to the second point, individuals have responsibility, not businesses. So Milton Friedman's going to accept that as an individual, you have all kinds of responsibilities. Your responsibilities to your culture, your communities, your friends and families, uh, your moral codes that you grew up with. He's going to say, yeah, absolutely. You as an individual uh, could have all kinds of duties, all kinds of responsibilities. As an American, you might have a responsibility to go um, vote or to go serve your country in war or something like that. As a member of the church, you could have all kinds of responsibilities. You could go a responsibility to go to mass, to give to the church, uh, to serve others. And so he's going to say, okay, as individuals, absolutely, you have all these kind of responsibilities. But the problem is that when you say another entity uh, should have responsibility, that really the well-being of others should be taken care of by the government or by businesses, you reduce your importance. You reduce your responsibility as an individual. Because look, if I know my poor neighbor, you know, who's struggling for food, is going to get her meals through uh, the supermarket, who now has a responsibility to give to her, that's less that I have to care. That's less that I have to do. That's less that I have to be involved in that neighbor's life. I don't have to worry about it. Because somebody else is going to take care of it. Some other big entity. And you might say, well, that's all well and good. You know, that's easier. But the problem is that that's not efficient. And that ultimately requires higher taxation, higher prices, rather than you going out as individuals and taking care of those that are around you. Milton Friedman's going to be big on this idea that you should take care of those that, um, those that are closest to you, those that you should have responsibility for. And again, the more that you think the government or business should be involved in charity, should be involved in social welfare, uh, then the less you have to do. And he talks about this uh, on, par on page four uh, of the, uh, the reading. Okay, so now we get to the third point. So the third point is this idea that um, when you expect businesses to be responsible, you are taking other people's money. Those other people are consumers, employers, employees, excuse me, and shareholders. So when you say, look, you, the business, you have to, um, you know, give to the food bank, you have to uh, support and fund the new library, the new education programs. Essentially, there's people that pay for that. And this is what Friedman's always going to get back to. It's always individuals that ultimately pay. So that could mean that in order to pay for this charity, businesses have to rise the prices, raise the prices on their goods. And so consumers pay more and consumers have less money. Or maybe they have to lower employee wages 
or maybe just not give them the bonuses that they would otherwise give or the raises. Or by giving that there's less money, less profits, less revenue being generated, and so stocks are lower, and so shareholders get less. And so in any of these cases, individuals are losing money, and individuals then have less resources to give in the way that they want to give. And so that for Friedman uh, is going to be fundamentally problematic. Again, Friedman is all about empowering individuals, giving individuals the most amount of money and the most amount of resources possible, giving them the most amount of choice. And when you reduce that, um, you know, for Friedman, you have ultimately created a system that is not as free, not as rich, not as productive, not as creative, and ultimately a system that is going to reduce social welfare. So the paradox, and this goes, this is connected with the invisible hand theory, the paradox is the more that when you expect corporations or government to take over social welfare, the less social welfare actually is increased. And he talks about this on page uh, two. All right, so that's the introduction to Friedman. That is, those are the three principal reasons why Friedman believes that businesses uh, should not be involved uh, in uh, giving to charity. And just I kind of want to follow up with one further point. He's also going to say at a practical level, level, when businesses give to charity, oftentimes they're going to give and they're not going to really know practically what is the best way to give. When they take their actions, they give a lot of money, does it really solve the problem? Friedman says, look, they're experts in business. They're experts in making products or providing us a service. They're not necessarily experts in how to best eradicate a social problem. You know, give to charities. Give to people that are directly involved in that problem as individuals. And as individuals, you can see in your own local community what's working and what's not working. And then final, the final reason, at a kind of theoretical uh, level, why he believes that it is using other people's money and that's wrong and that ultimately you're giving up control of resources is he's going to say that if we're going to take from others, that if we're going to take other people's money and we're going to give to something that is deemed socially important, we have a mechanism for that. And that mechanism is political. We vote for people, and we vote for people, and they tell us what they want to do with our money, uh, how they're going to use our money. But when we don't uh, have the government doing that, and we expect the business to do that, essentially, we're making the business a tax collector, but we're going around the normal political process. <coughs> and that's great <coughs> for those that want more money in the hands of big entities, whether it be government or whether it be uh, um, corporations, because um, you don't have to go through the political process. The political process is messy. People may disagree. People may say, no, I don't want my go money going to that, or no, I don't think this is the most effective use. But if you can pressure uh, businesses into believing that they should be doing this, then again, they become kind of an arm of the government. They become a tax collector. All right. So again, just to kind of recap, the three principal reasons that Friedman believes that businesses should not be involved in giving to charity, providing for the social welfare, is number one, when businesses are expected to do that, uh, they, you essentially give up the free distribution of resources. Two, <coughs> when businesses... Uh, come to be expected to give to charity. Individuals are given less responsibility because somebody else uh, is expected to take care of the social problem. And then three, when businesses do that, they use other people's money for a <coughs> cause these people may not agree with. And that then causes individuals to have less money to give to the cause that they believe in. All right.